אוקיי, גוד איבנינג אבריוואן, חג חנוכה שמח, חבי חנוכה, אני מקווה להכיר אותך פה, אני מבקש לכולם, our community, our city, our country, the whole world, uh, holiday full of light, full of wisdom, full of understanding, uh, to go through the challenges and bring peace, shalom and harmony to the whole world. Amen. Amen. The, the portion of this week is Miketz. Miketz, that means in the end, in the end of the two years, um, this uh, story of the Torah this week is about uh, Yosef coming out of the jail. He was supposed to go to the jail for 10 years. He end up staying for 12 years. So the story of the Torah starts when the, the extra two years end up. And the famous uh, story of uh, Pharaoh uh, about the seven cows and Yusuf coming out, out of jail, he become the king and he met his brothers. Uh, this portion always falls in Hanukkah, always. And uh, the story of the Yosef, the story of Hanukkah, uh, these dreams, bizarre dreams of the Pharaoh, the 17 cows eating the seven fat cows. So the, the portions of the Torah that are not by accident, they are by design every week from the beginning of the creation that we must read this section, we must learn this lesson during the Hanukkah. Uh, this, the lesson of tonight is, the title is uh, Memory, Connection and Light in one side, Remembering, Being Connected and the Light in one hand and in the other hand is forgetfulness and disconnection and darkness in the other hand. You know, one of the stories of Hanukkah is to remember the story of the Hashmonaim, a small group of spiritual people uh, won the Greek Empire. So, one more time, the, the lesson of tonight is Remembering memory versus forgetfulness. Why we are talking about this subject? Because if you read the Torah, uh, Yosef, in the last portion, in the last portion, when he told the meaning of the dreams of the minister of Pharaoh, that he's going to be released, and when he was getting released, Yosef asked him, he says, please, remember me. Remember me when you go talk to the Pharaoh, so he would release me. And then the minister goes to Pharaoh, and for some magical way he forget about Yosef for two years. And after two years he remembers Yosef, and then he tells uh, Pharaoh about Yosef. So what is this games of remembering and forgetting? Uh, Torah, you know, is it's not a storybook. It's obviously it doesn't want to tell us about remembering and forgetting. There is a big secret, there is a big lesson behind remembering and forgetfulness. The Torah is, is a way of life, is, is the tool for our success. Uh, what does it try to teach us you know, with this memory business? And what do you have to do with Hanukkah and what do you have to do with yourself? Uh, before we, we talk about the lesson of the Torah, I want to talk about Hanukkah. I'm so excited, you know, we just light the candle and we say the blessing. So I want to talk about Hanukkah and then we're going to move on to the lesson of this week. Uh, what do we know about Hanukkah? Hanukkah, is it, is it a tradition? Is it like, you know, just lighting a candle, exchanging gifts? You know, they told us is to remember the miracles or is the light of the miracle. We've been lighting candles every year, you know. Do we see any difference in our life? 
it's it's obviously it's not a tradition. Obviously, it's 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 very meaningful. Uh, it's a very kabbalistic act, actually. As you know, we have uh, three major holidays. We have uh, the year starts with Passover, and then we have uh, um, Shavuot, and then we have Sukkot. That's the three regalim, three major holidays. And in between, we have some other holidays. They are connected to each other. They all involve with each other. It's a process that we have to go through every year. As I told, shared with you before, uh, the process of tikkun, the process of changing ourselves, the process of reaching our goals, the process of finding that healing and happiness and joy and the soulmate we are looking for, it takes at least a year. We have to go through this process of all the holidays. You know, on the way here, I was thinking about the holidays. Honestly, I come up with a very beautiful answer. It's, it's a treasure hunt. Honestly, it's a treasure hunt. We had to go through Rosh Hashanah and Kippur and Sukkot and, and Passover and Hanukkah. It's a treasure hunt. It's, it's, it's like one lesson after another, one uh, elevation after another, one growth after another. And in the, year, in the end of the year, or after a few years, finally we find that treasure. It's nothing but treasure. I know they told us, it's religion, be scared, be fearful, make sure you do it this way, make sure you do it that way. All those are all correct. But it's the lesson behind. Is the wisdom behind it. What we are learning, what we are achieving, what we are changing about ourselves in every holiday. And in the end of the year, then we are going to the next level. So in the Hebrew calendar, we are toward the end. You know, we have three more months until uh, Passover. That's an, uh, it's a new Hebrew year, not a calendar year. So we went through the process of the whole year. Three months ago, all of us, we were here in the Kenisa, and we said, you know, God, forgive me, I'm sorry. You know, I, I made a mistake. Maybe I said Lashon Ara, maybe I stole something, maybe I hurt somebody, maybe I put down somebody, please forgive me. And I'm not going to make that same mistake again. So, one of the reasons of Hanukkah is to remind us, remind us about what we promised and what we committed in, in Yom Kippur. Because the year is going to finish in three months. Did we learn all the lessons? Did we took a note? Are we controlling the, the animal within us? Did we put away all the hate and anger and jealousy mm -hmm. and uh, controlling and ego? The year is going to end. They're going to reward us for whatever we achieved. So this is another milestone. Hanukkah is another milestone in this process of the one year. Um, again, remember, uh, do we remember the promises we made in, uh, in, in Yom Kippur? Obviously, we don't remember all of them, but that's, this is a good reminder, remember. If you forget, we are not going to find the treasure. If you remember, then we are on the way to find the treasure. Are we within the 10 minutes? Or? So, Chanukah, like I said, is another milestone. There's another chain in that one year, the process of growth that you're supposed to do. And, uh, you know, the Chanukah, we they always, we learn that it's called, the light of Chanukah is Oraganus, the concealed light. What concealed light? Where is, what is this concealed light that you're talking about? Uh, last class we mentioned that there is two types of blessings in our life. The revealed blessing, which is our family, health, wealth, all the good friends, whatever we have in this world. And there is another 99% of the blessing is called the concealed blessing. It's the Oraganus. It's waiting up there as a potential for our growth. We're going to receive that 99% blessing 
when we grow, then we, you know, like we explained, there's katnut gadlut, thinking small and thinking big. When I graduate from the school of life, like Yosef, he didn't fall for all the bad stories, bad events that happened to me. If I learn how to stay away, not to, not to let these stories to affect of who I am, then, uh, then, I, then I can achieve that growth that I need to do. Um, we are within the 10 minutes. Uh, this is going to be a wonderful class again. So all the Facebook viewers, you're welcome to join the class. The next class is going to be in January 11, 2018. Or you can watch the classes on Eris Culture Center. Thank you. Thank you. So, what is this Oraganus? What is the, where is this concealed light? Do you remember at the beginning of the Torah, there it says, Bereshit bara Elohim tashamam et ha'aretz, when God created the world and the heavens, and the first thing He created, He says, Vayihi Or. God says, I want light, and light was created. This is the concealed light in the Torah. This is the concealed blessing that, that uh, we are looking for. One person of it is revealed to us, which is the sun, you know, and the 99% of it is concealed. Can you imagine life without the sun? There is no life without the sun. So all the blessings that we have is from the 1% revelation of that light. Imagine there is another 99% of it is waiting for us, that we need to reveal it. Vayhi or. Do you know, now let's talk about the pure Kabbalah, the, the freaky stuff. What day the Hanukkah starts, what day of Kislev Hanukkah starts? 25th of Kislev is the first day of Hanukkah. Do you know what, if you count the words from Bereshit, Vayhi or, what? number would be 25. The reason that we start Hanukkah on the 25th of Kislev, because the 25th word of the Torah is or, light. We are trying to connect to that Oraganus. And they call it the miracle light, you know, all the blessings, all the goodness. Yeah. It is a miracle light. It is a blessing. But we have to earn it. Just by lighting the candle, it won't happen. You know, that's just a tradition. We had to go through the process of 52 Shabbatot. We have to go through the process of all the holidays. We have to learn the classes. We have to change ourselves, change this nature, change this stubbornness that we have that we don't want to change. We're keeping grouch, we're keeping the hate. So, this light is from the beginning of the Torah, and on the 25th of Kislev, which is the 25th word in the Torah, is also light. Let's find more secrets about the Hanukkah. What month, what sign of astrology sign we are celebrating Hanukkah? It's Sagittarius, mm -hmm. right? Sagittarius. Happy birthday, Susie Jan. And Sagittarius, what's the sign of the Sagittarius? Do you know? It's a half human, upper body human, and the lower body is a horse, is an animal. And he has this weapon. It's a weapon, you know, and he's, and he's aiming it toward the stars. You know, thousands of years ago when they created these signs, they didn't have no machine guns or any other kind of a weapon, but it's a weapon. It's a weapon. So, that's another hint. Half human, half animal, that's the only sign in the zodiac sign that has such a character. We either have humans or we either have animals. What is this half and half talking about? So, again, we are going back to remembering. You know, you remember in Gemini, you know, you become all human when you receive the Torah. You remember during Virgo, during the holidays, we said, I'm sorry, I'm not going to make that mistake again. 
And now the Creator knows us very well. He knows we didn't keep our promise. We are like a half and half right now. We change a little bit, but we're still keeping the old habits. That's why we have the sign of a half and half, half animal, half human. We have to ask ourselves when we are standing in front of the, the candles, am I the human that lighting this candle or I'm still the old me, the old animal? Sorry, I'm sorry if I say animal, keep saying animal. We're talking about the, the Farsi, Nafse, Amor, Nafse, Did I change myself? Am I still that little kid that cries and complains and blames and it's all about me and what's the, it's all about what I want. It's all about give it to me and I don't like this life. It's not fair and too hard. And Or am I the human? Am I yourself? That I learn not to react to situations. So obviously we want to be that human, but the hint of this sign is amazing. And why this weapon? Why? shooting uh, this weapon toward the stars. Uh, the lesson is that I don't want the stars to control me. I don't want the, my, my sign to control me. I want to be in charge. I want to control my life. I want to be the human that set its own destiny. I don't want to be that animal that, you know, just react and angry and hateful and being totally controlled by its uh, astrological sign, whatever sign you are, not only Sagittarius. So, he says we have three more months until a new year, a new Hebrew year. Uh, control yourself. Go against your natural... Uh, character. Adapt to be a tzaddik, you know, like, uh, like yourself, tzaddik. There is a lesson behind the, the candles. It says, yeah, the miracles are right here, but only the tzaddikim, only the tzaddikim can, can achieve it, can reach those miracles. That's why we're learning about yourself now, how he was tzaddik. Uh, Yosef says, I don't belong here. Jail, I'm a slave, I don't belong here. Even as a king, he says, I don't belong here. You know, <coughs> I belong to a different uh, set of thinking. I, my mind, my consciousness is Israel. I, uh, I want to be connected, I want to remember who I am. That's another hint of the remember. One of the lessons of Hanukkah is, remember you are a Jew. Remember. You know, it's, uh, honestly, we forget. We forget the connection to the Torah. We forget connect the connection to the, our Creator. We forget the connection to who we are, to our soul. One of the secrets of Hanukkah is remember that you are a Jew. Again, remember. Don't forget. Um, it's, uh, you know... I can't resist uh, not to talk about the miracle of Hanukkah of this year. You know, uh, we we all we all experience miracles in a different levels. But uh, the Creator is a great storyteller. The Creator is a great storyteller. That's why the Torah is all stories. He created stories for us. Our life is one story. Uh, let me tell you guys a story. Tell me if you remember this story. You remember once upon a time uh, there was a Jewish woman that she was uh, she was in palace and she was talking to a king and she convinced the king to help the Jews and to get rid of the Jew haters and the king listened to her. And then the, the grandchild of that king end up building Jerusalem. Kurosh is the grandchild of Ahasuerus. So, either grandchild or, uh, or maybe the son. So, you all said Esther 
do, do you see Esther in our time right now? Who is, who is she? Dr. Trump. Ivanka, <laughs> Ivanka <laughs> Trump. <laughs> she, she's our Esther. She, she's our miracle. You know, and building Jerusalem again, building uh, Israel again. So, you know, when we stand in front of the candle and we ask for a miracle, we think so small, we think so tiny. You know, we want like one little thing for myself. But, we are connected, we are one. And we are changing, you know. Look at all these classes, look at the look at all the Torah, look at how much Zohar we read right now through through the whole world. Is 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 changing our life as a nation. It looks like we find the we are finding the treasure. So we keep elevating. And there was a time we were ashamed to say that we are even Jewish. We used to change our names, we used to be afraid, we used to hide. Look what happened in the past 67 years. That, that's not a miracle. And that's, but by bringing the Torah, by bringing this change to ourselves, by bringing uh, uh, elevating our consciousness as individual and as a nation. Uh, and why eight days? You know, why eight days of Hanukkah? Why not is like one day or two days or fifteen days? Uh, you know, we light one candle and two candles and three candles. Gradually, gradually, we are elevating ourselves to that awesome light. Actually, Hanukkah is the last day when all the candles are lit. We said Zota Hanukkah. Zota Hanukkah. This is Hanukkah. We are like building up. We are gradually, step by step, because we cannot handle the, that light. We have to gradually build up to it. And why eight candles, you know, and the Shamash nine, and then we have the Hanukkah, ten? Because we have the ten Sephirot. I told you every class, the ten sefirot are the building block for everything. There is a ten sefirot in Hanukkah. There is ten sefirot in our body. There is ten sefirot in one dollar. There is ten sefirot even for the Creator. So where is the ten sefirot in the Hanukkah? And how we can prepare ourselves for that miracle? So everything we learned until now was up to the first day. Remembering the promises we made, change ourselves, the year is coming to the end. I want to be the human, I don't want to be the animal, I don't want to be controlled by my zodiac sign or any outside influences. And then we came to the first uh, candle. So how does it work? How does it work? We are... Hopefully, you know, achieve Malchut already. What is achieve? We are going to go from down, from the lower Sephira to the higher Sephira. So the, the, the last day of Hanukkah, the eighth of Hanukkah, is going to be the level of Keter. I'm sorry if it's technical, but I'm going to explain myself. Uh, so, we are the Malchut. We are the physical world. Hopefully by now, what is Malchut is humbleness is humbleness, shaflut in Hebrew. Hopefully by now, after studying so many years, we, re we reach that level of humbleness. We humble, like Yosef. Uh, we humble like Avot. And we also have the joy in our life. We have the happiness in our life. The key to any miracle or any change is, is happiness. So the first level is, is us by achieving humbleness and joy and happiness in our life. What is Yesod? Yesod is the Shamash. is the one that uh, in the middle. Why? Because Yesod and Yosef is the Torah, is the truth. The Torah is available to us. The Emet is available to, to us, the truth. We have the truth. We don't, this is not something we want to achieve. It's not like God give me the Torah, I have already the Torah, so it's not something that I need to wish for. So we are the Malchut, the Shamash is the, the Yesod, 
which is the Torah, and the first night we are lighting the the the, the, the Sefirah of Hod. Hod is is Timimut. So we are going toward finding that treasure in the end of the year. This is what I need to achieve now. Every night, I have to tell myself, this is my lesson. This is the lesson of tonight. This is what I have to achieve tonight in order to complete Hanukkah. So the first night that I light and candle is hot. Hot is Timimu, is simplicity, simpleness. It's Aaron and Kohen Gadol. We know the story of Aaron. He was the older brother, but they make the younger brother to be the leader. He didn't complain. He was sweet all his life. He was, uh, in Hebrew they said, Ose Shalom Verodev Shalom. All his life was about peace. Having peace within himself and creating peace for others. So, the first night of the Hanukkah, when I light a candle, I have to look at myself, you know, how much peace I have within me. And, or how much peace I'm creating for other people. The second night of Hanukkah is, is Netzach, is, is Bitachon, is the certainty, is the Emunah, is, is the victorious. I'm, I'm a winner in life. Uh, there is no way we're going to find that treasure. We all watch movies, always the strongest, the, the one has the most certainty, find the treasure. So, we have the certainty, we have the emuna, we have the pitachon. Toward what? Emuna certain toward what? Toward my life. Who I am. You know, the story of of Yosef that he never complained. He knew last week we spoke. Whoever was not here last week, I hardly recommend listening to last week's class. He dreamed, he had vision, he has prophecy about his life. He knew the end game. He knew he's going to become the king, and he knew he's going to save the, the Jewish nation, but he have to go through some uh, process. So we, we have to have this certainty that the end is, is wonderful. The end is good. This is a process I'm going through. And there is a, in Hebrew, they said, Hashkacha Pratit, there is a, individual supervision on all of us. Nobody's ever alone. There is a purpose, there is a reason for whoever is in my life, all the situation, my job, my class, my kenisa, everything is by design. Uh, my, you know, they, they, they ask what is the freedom of choice that we have? Is Everything is by design, the only choice I have, if i happy, if I accept it, if I deal with it, or I become depressed, sad, and run away from it, and I fall to the negativity. The next candle, the candle of tonight, I love it, Tiferet, is the balance, is the balance, and balance of what? Of, of uh, in Kabbalah they call it, I want to receive in order to share. This is the balance I want to have. I don't want to be greedy, and I don't want to be too passive. We want it all, I want to receive, but in order to share. And Tiferet is also Rachamim, having, uh, how you say Rachamim in? Rahmat. Rahmat or mercy. You have to be merciful. In the tense of of the Creator, the yud heh is in Tiferet. You always say, you know, the merciful God. How merciful we are in our life. I'm reminding you, in, again, in order to find that treasure, to have that miracle in our life, we have to practice all these qualities. And tonight was about having a balance and having mercy. The, the next uh, night is, is going to be the Gevura. We talk about it so many times. You have to be strength, give okay? Roman strength. Having the strength to overcome uh, the negative inclination in my life. What's, what's bad in me? What's selfish in me? You remember uh, last week class, we said Yaakov faced Satan in order to become Israel. It needs strength. 
can you imagine, you know, to dealing with Satan? We have to find the strength. And again, it's, it's part of the class of tonight, remembering the strength. You know, sometimes, some days we feel so weak. So, we are sad. You know, something happened and we are sad and weak. The Zohar explained to us that remember the days that you were up. Remember the days you had strength. By remembering, you're going to get that strength from that day. If you forget the good days, if you forget the days that you had strength, then you forgot it. That's gone. The next candle is, is Chesed. The next candle is Chesed. Uh, chesed is nothing but love. You know, it's, it's so easy to recognize a person that is full of love, full of light, full of good energy. He's loving himself, loving life, loving everybody. So, and we had a class about the Creator that is nothing but love, Eshq, Amritu. So, how much love we have in our life? We want uh, that miracle, we want to reach that treasure. How much love we are practicing? Are we pick and choosing, you know, who to love? And the next level is, is uh, the next candle is, is Bina. Bina is in Farsi Binesh, and is Bina in a simple way is understanding. Understanding what? Understanding uh, life, circumstances. Don't be so reactive to any situation. There is a, a reason for everything that happened to our life. Don't forget the, the word uh, individual supervision. Everybody, us and other people, there is an individual supervision uh, from the Creator directly. We have to understand every situation, every behavior from others. It's by design. Understand. Don't react. Don't become judgmental or hateful toward any situation. One of the beautiful gifts that I got over 12, 13 years of studying Kabbalah is I have a better level of understanding. I understand situations. I understand people. I have, I feel people, you know, that I see a connection, I understand what they go through. The, the next uh, level is Chokhmah, the seven candle. Do you know in the Torah this week what Paro call Yosef? He says you are Navon and Chacham. You are very intelligent and you have a lot of Chokhmah. Do you know... Uh, yeah, there are some not very smart kings, but they don't last for a long time. But do you know any any king or any president that is not super smart? So, you know, we want to be the king in our life. We want to be like Yosef, be Tzadikim. We have to get knowledge, get wisdom, get Chokhmah. Who's Chokhmah? What Chokhmah? What philosophy? Nothing but the Torah. The Torah is... It has it all for us. The Shamash is with us all the way. Yosef is with us all the way, every night, every day. We need this Chokhmah, we need this wisdom. We need Chokhmah to have dreams, to have prophecies, um, to have visions. We need Chokhmah to understand people. We, have, we need Chokhmah to understand ourselves, to recognize that animal, to recognize that evil incarnation, to recognize, to see what is bad about me or what's dark in my life. And the last day, the last, uh, the eighth day of Hanukkah, the last candle is Keter. Is when I, I make Yichud, remember before the lighting the candle, I read the sentence, Le'ichud, Shem, Yud, He, Bevav, He. So, we are the Malchud, and the Creator is the Keter. When I go through this process, when I climb this ladder, I make it one, I make it Yichud. I make it 
one unit, me and my creator. If you reach that level, you want miracles, well, what do you want? Everything is yours. I remind you, the ore of the Torah that talks about Vahi or that's the light of the creation. It's not talking about the light, the physical light. The, the sun was created on the fourth day. That light is the light of creation. That's the light we have in the sperm that we create another human being. It's a, that's, that's the light we're talking about, the light of creation. You can create anything you want. That's why it's concealed because the Creator doesn't want it in everybody's hand. There's a lot of evil. So they keep saying it's only for tzaddikim, it's only for uh, righteous people. And righteous people, they know what to do with those, with that power, with that light. Um, let me tell you one more secret about uh, Hanukkah. We talk about uh, Hod and Hanukkah and Aaron Kohen Gadol and creating peace and bringing healing to other people. We have to act like Kohani. That's one of our jobs through the process to bring peace, to bring shalom, to bring healing. Uh, like the Kohanim do every Shabbat. Is anybody remember the sentences that the Kohanim recite every Shabbat? You should know. <laughs> the first sentence is Ivarcha Adonai Vishmerecha. Pay attention to the last word. Ya'er Adonai Panav Elecha Ve Yechuneka. That's the second word. Yechuneka. You remember Yechuneka and Chanukah? It's the same letters. Yechuneka and Chanukah. So every Shabbat or every Monday and Thursday when the Kohanim, they give us the blessing, they're injecting to us also that light of the Creator. That's light of the creation. That's the same organos. That's the same uh, light of the Chanukah. Yechuneka and Chanukah is the same, uh, the same word. So it's all connecting us to that first shalom, peace, healing, health, and then in a big picture it's connecting us to the, the light of the creation. Uh, I think we, we spoke enough about, uh, about Chanukah. There is so many other secrets, you know, like what, what we light, we are supposed to light uh, oil, right? In Hebrew, Shemen. Hashemen is the same word like Neshama. Neshama or Shemen is the same word. So by lighting the candle, we are lighting our Neshama. We are bringing light to our Neshama. We remember who we are or what we are, what, what's our purpose in this life. Uh, how far are we are within the one hour? Uh, five Fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes. Um, let's talk about the main uh, subject of the class that was forgetfulness versus memory. <coughs> let's uh, let's read from the Zohar. Uh, before we go there, you know Hebrew Hebrew language is is amazing. I mean, you can study Kabbalah if you don't know Hebrew, but there is certain level you can reach. But he knowing Hebrew is essential to reach higher levels. Do you know how you say in Hebrew forgetfulness? Shachachti. How you say darkness in Hebrew? Choshech. So forgetting and darkness is the same Hebrew letters. Like Shachach, uh, like he says, and then we have Choshech. It's the same letters. So, and in the other side, in the other hand, remembering in Hebrew is Zachar, this this core, and Zachar also means male in Hebrew, not male as a man. Means male, means the the right color, means the channel of giving. So when we're talking about forgetfulness, is because, you know, we, I'm going to tell you later after the class. Uh, so, 
So forgetfulness, if I forget something, is because there is some kind of a darkness. There is some kind of a dark area. There is some kind of a lack. Some kind of a fear in my life. That's what we are forgetting. That's why people can get Alzheimer's? Mm -hmm. uh, after age of 70 is a different game ball. <laughs> so... And uh, by the way, you know, if what's the best tool against Alzheimer's is studying and learning and mm -hmm. elevating and, and remembering and making, you know... No. Yeah, so... so it, what's fighting forgetfulness is remembering. So we have to fight it by remembering. And remembering in Hebrew is is sharing by giving, by being a channel, by connecting. In Hebrew, zachar means. So let's let's read let's read uh, from the Zohar. We are book number six. We are page number one fifty four. Uh, section 8. Don't cross your hand, don't cross your legs. Uh, with this reading, you know, with this Kavana, if you don't have the book, just listen to it and I'm going to explain it later in English. Page 154, section 8. Safi Sada Panjo Chor, section 8. With this conscious, we are, uh, we are reading to remember all the good times, to remember that we are extension of the Creator, to remember that we are part of the Torah, to remember we have a responsibility, we have a job to do, to remember that we have to keep growing, and uh, to remember and being a channel of sharing and giving and connecting is the best remedy to darkness and choshech and, and lax and forgetfulness. So we're in section 8. Va'at atar dahava baya nasui kam kamiya makti velo zachar sara mashkim et yosef vayishkecheu kevan dahama velo zachar sara mashkim mahu vayishkecheu ela vayishkecheu atar da'ita baya shachacha Vadahu Katz, the Satra de Hoshech, Shnatam Yamin, Me Shnatam, the Tav Dargal Darga, Daita Baya Zachraya, Zachira. Therefore, the place of forgetfulness rose against him. It is written, Nevertheless, the chief butler did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. He asked, If it says the chief butler did not remember, why then add, but forgot him? He answered, but forgot him indicate the place in which there is a forgetfulness, which is called the end of the side of the darkness. He asked, what are the two years? And he answered, the grade of forgetfulness return after the time to the grade in which there is remembrance. If you remember, I said that Yosef was supposed to be in jail for 10 years only. And through all his life, this far, he had the full emuna. He was not complaining, he was not crying, he didn't blame anybody. He knew there is a, a divine supervision over him. But when the, the head butler was leaving the jail, you know, for a moment he forget himself. You know, he becomes selfish. He says, you know, I'm so tired of this dungeon. For 10 years I'm in this dungeon, come on. You know, forget about Emuna, forget about my Creator, forget about, you know, my purpose in life, forget about the dreams I had. Hey, Butler, can you remind the Pharaoh who took me out? Just for, you know, the moment he lost his Emuna, the, the moment he lost his certainty, the moment he fell for the game and his for surrounding, he got two more years in the jail. It's not a punishment. This system doesn't work in punishment. The system works on, on believing in your purpose, believing in the process, believing that I have to face Satan. You remember that sentence? By the way, after the class we have a um, game, not a game, but instead of meditation or, or any other thing, we're going to 
have a conversation for a few minutes. Um, so the moment he forgot, where is he coming from? Who is he? What is his purpose? He ended up staying in jail for another two years. So forgetfulness is a, is a consequence of darkness, of losing it, of making a mistake, of uh, falling for the negative aspect of me, falling for the selfish aspect of ourselves. And um, then when you come out of the jail and in the matter of five minutes, you know, he, he cleaned up and he's sitting with the king. What is this uh, dream of the Pharaoh that he had 17 skinny cows eating five fat cows and they still stay skinny? You know, Rabbi Ashlaf and uh, other Kabbalists, they give you examples. <coughs> Do you remember you went to a three wonderful weeks of vacation? You had the time of your life, beautiful vacation, all you can eat, you know, all inclusive. And you come back home and you go to work. As soon as you walk into the work, the most chaotic day, the worst day, there is a lot of challenges, full of chaos, and you know, for in a matter of seconds, you forget, you lose all the pleasure, all the fun you had for that the past three weeks. It's like you never went to that vacation. So, what's the cause? What's the cause of darkness in our life? Is forgetfulness that we forget. We forget a good time, we forget a good friend, we forget a good family member. Maybe they are acting crazy now, but there was a time they were good, that we can build on it again. We forget there was a time we were in Mount Sinai, you know, with the Creator and with Moshe. We forget there was a time that, you know, we were in love with our soulmates and you know with good friends. So the lesson of the Torah and the Zohar is that forgetting goodness is bring us darkness, bring us lacks to our life. Or the other way around, if we fall into sadness or negativity, uh, we forget the good times that we had, the good friends and the family we had. The good relationship that we have. Um, you know, I was thinking about, you know, sometimes you go visit a sick person, he's all weak, he doesn't have no energy, he doesn't have no power to even open his eyes. What do we do? What trick did we use? We tell the guy, you remember we went to a vacation once together? You remember the holiday we spent together? You remember your children? You remember your Kenisa? You remember, I don't know, something good? All of a sudden it gets power. It gets energy. He opens his eyes. He sits up. He starts having a conversation with you. So when the Torah talking about remembering and forgetting, it's a, it's a tremendous, powerful energy. It's a blessing to remember. And it's a curse to forget. Um, so one of the the tools of Satan is to make us forget the good times. The Satan wants us in a dungeon, sad, depressed, cold, alone, and selfish. That's a that's a that's a game of Satan. But. Can you imagine if you remember every good things in our life, are we ever going to fall into that dungeon? Impossible. You remember all the friends, you remember all the vacations, you remember all the good families. I, I don't want to go extremely spiritual and sounds religious, but remember Torah, remember that you are a Jew. It's a blessing to, to have access to this wisdom. And... Um, then the next question uh, Zohar asks, you know, come on, we have these huge challenges in life. 
Sometimes, you know, right now we're experiencing it next door. We have these huge challenges. With this, we're going to end the class, right? We're within the world. What's going on with these challenges? What is going on with this huge health issue or relationship issues? It's all by design. It's all by the design of the Creator. It's all on an individual supervision. Because we need to reach our maximum potential. And we won't reach it by, by going through these challenges. I'm going to give you guys an example from Rabbi Ashlag. It's a beautiful story. Rabbi Ashlag said, there is a guy that he decided to, I don't know, become a doctor. He needs to study for four years or seven years in a university. But he's struggling for money, you know. He also needs money. He's so short in money. So he go through the first year, and then... You know, he sees such a difficult process to become a doctor, such a long process, and he's not making any money. In the other hand, he has a friend that uh, is a but is a bus boy, and he's bringing money every night home. So, one time, the the student of uh, medicine, he says, "You know what? I'm going to quit my study, and I'm going to go become a bus boy, so I can make, earn some money." So he quit his studying and he wanted to drive his car to a job. His friend, the bus boy, make a flat tire on his car. So he won't go to get the job. So he end up walking to the job. So he talks to the owner. He says, don't hire this guy. This guy is not good for you. So the guy that was supposed to become a doctor, he realized, you know, he cannot even get a job. And he goes back to study. And then he become a doctor and he's saving many people's life. What is the moral of the story is that sometimes the answer is no. Sometimes there is big challenges in our life. The doors are closed. Why? Because we have a different purpose. We have a bigger goal. We have a bigger achievement. There is a bigger potential is waiting for us. So by... By... Me deciding what's good for me, that's not the right decision. By me disconnecting from my destiny, the good destiny, is the wrong decision. So the universe always push me, push me to go toward my maximum potential, what I need to become. There is another example Rabbi Ashlag says, he says if, there, if you have a kid, two, three years old kid, his face is itching. You know, he asked you, Daddy, can you give me a sharp thing? Can you give me a knife so I can scratch my face? Of course you're not going to give it to me. Honestly, we don't know what's good for us. We ask for things that we don't know if it's good for us or not. And if we don't get it, that doesn't mean that, you know, uh, they don't like me in this universe because we have a better, there is a better plan for us. I have a much bigger potential. Potential. It's not what I want. We don't receive what we want in this life. We receive what we need. All the f difficult relationships, all the challenges, all the businesses, all the health issues. Uh, the Kabbalists say something amazing, you know. It says... You know, sometimes uh, we want something so bad. We ask for it so badly. And we never receive it. In 10 years, we look back. Or in a few years, or in a few weeks, we look back. And say, oh my God, was it me asking for that thing? How stupid I was. I was asking for that thing. It was not mine. It was not good for me. So... You know, and then they come up with this uh, sentence, says, thank God for unanswered prayers. Sometimes we pray and for things that I want, but it could have hurt us. Whatever we need, whatever our purpose, whatever our destiny is, is within our limit of what we have. We have to reach our maximum potential. Um... Uh, 
And there is another saying, it says, be careful what you pray for, you might get it. And this is not what you need. I'm going to finish uh, the class all within the one hour with one sentence that the Kabbalists use when they want to pray, when they want to wish something for somebody else, when they're asking for something for themselves. It says, may God give you what you need to fulfill your spiritual destiny. I'm going to repeat it one more time. May God give you what you need to fulfill your spiritual destiny. Chag Hanukkah Sameach. Happy New Year. Thank you. Uh, have a wonderful week and see you on Shabbat.